the initiation of new policies, in my view, should be clearly that of the board. I would look particularly to the board chair, or it may be the chair of the executive committee or the chair of a governance committee to start or initiate that process. But if it's a significant change in policy, change in mission, for example, I would expect the full board to be involved, unless, of course, it's a huge board where uh, that's not possible, but where it's possible in a board of reasonable size. I think uh, that degree of involvement uh, would be would be essential. The particular responsibility of the administration, I think it depends somewhat on the nature of the issue. If it's a budgetary or fiscal matter, I would look to the Vice President for Business and Finance, as well as the Chair of the Business and Finance Committee, for example. I would also look, as I'd mentioned, both to the General Counsel or University Attorney and to the corporate secretary or board professional because they're the full-time people who are the guardians or caretakers of the institutional structure. And they, uh, they're the experts. And I'd look to them first, but I'd keep the board chair particularly involved. And there are times when I think just the board chair and the board professional and the general counsel or university attorney may have a chance to think through, let's say, some issue that has just come from a court decision or a recent legislative action. In my view, those policies which are most in need of formal reinforcement those that deserve to be bylaws tend to be many fewer than a lot of governing boards would be inclined to recognize. Indeed, if I can borrow a fairly simple phrase, I'd say to a governing board looking at its bylaws, when in doubt, leave it out. Don't enact something as a bylaw unless it's really necessary. Instead, there are all sorts of opportunities to scale down to a lower level. Adopting resolutions, for example, particularly if there's only a a temporary or transitional need. You don't have to have a bylaw on an event that comes once in a lifetime or once in a decade. So, That's why I would say, when in doubt, leave it out, and anoint formally as bylaws only those policies that are really of essential stature, high enough up in the food chain, really, to deserve formal recognition and attention. Otherwise, I think um, there are a lot lot greater flexibility if you're dealing with just resolutions and uh, less than bylaw quality, just a whole lot easier if one proceeds in that way. Uh, Let me also mention the role of the university attorney or general counsel. I have a special regard for university attorneys and general counsels. In my view, the last person to leave the room during an executive session. Indeed, often the university attorney should stay through the executive session, but if for some reason the room has to be cleared, I'd say the university attorney or general counsel is the last person who ought to leave. The university attorney or general counsel is the person who ought most fully to be involved as a colleague in the president's cabinet, for example. I would argue that regular periodic review, don't have to do it every meeting or once a month, but certainly annually there should be systematic review to make sure that there hasn't been a recent court decision, for example, that may profoundly affect, and this affects not only the 
public sector, but independent institutions as well may be uh, directly affected by a court decision that only the university attorney or general counsel really knows about. I would give uh, high priority to the board professional or corporate secretary, whatever the title, but I think the primary responsibility for regular review and, when necessary, modification, amendment, that that falls to the university attorney and general counsel.